Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, good to see you all here. Um, over here in the gathering space, Lutheran Men in Mission have a table set up. They have crosses for sale, information about some of their projects, information about the bridge walk. So check that out if you're interested after service today. There's also a table out there about Lutheran World Relief kits, um, something that we as a congregation work at every year. Information out there about that. Um, is there anybody from the Board of Social Ministries here today for a temple talk? We thought somebody was going to be here, but there isn't anybody. There's a table out there that takes care of one of their projects. They are sending um, supplies over to Afghanistan where Jonas Milligan is stationed. He is the husband of our new secretary that's been with us for about a year now, Erica. And um, they need supplies, and there's information about that. Um, check that out, please. And there's probably something in the bulletin about it, too. Um, September 8th, we begin our new hours with contemporary service at 8 o'clock, 1030 traditional service with a dedicated Sunday school or education hour in between, 915 to 1015. On that date, September 8th, we will hold an intergenerational rally day downstairs for Sunday school. So the regular Sunday school classes will not start until September 15th. We invite all of you to attend the rally day and the look forward to the expanded adult um, Sunday school classes. Also on September 8th, at both services, we will celebrate Holy Communion as we also celebrate our anniversary day and the 25th anniversary of the ELCA. There's plenty of other announcements and more details about these in the bulletin. You can take care of that yourself, obviously. Would you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? Let's be the Holy Trinity. One God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness, hymn number 521.
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God. Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and mortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. shall hide 
then shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I first lesson is from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, reading verses 9b to 14. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in a parched places. Make and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interest or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob from the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading is Psalm 103, 1 to 8. Please follow in your bulletin. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. The second reading is from the 12th chapter of Hebrews, reading verses 18 through 29. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given if even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, 
but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken. That is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire, the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand upright. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all of his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. There's no disputing it. I'm getting a little feedback up here, Gerald. It's no disputing it, names are important. Just ask any young couple who's predicting the birth of a baby as they pore over books with different names in them, with the etymologies and all the meanings and origins. They're having a baby and they know, they just know that that name is going to be very important and it will mean a great deal to the child. All of us, for example, have friends that's hard to imagine would be named anything else. I have a friend from years ago named Bud. He is a Bud. There's no doubting it. He could be named nothing else. Or Grace. We've known people named Grace. Grace Blackford, for example. Do you see her? She is her name. Gracious, grace-filled. She is Grace. It's like someone saw these people before they grew up, got to know them, and said, yep, you should be called Bud. But of course, that's hardly ever the way it is with names. You get a name and then you grow into it. Maybe he's Bud because that was the name he was given. But over time, he became what we called him, Bud. I think that's the way it is with Grace. Grace, that's a big, highfalutin name. I mean, I can't imagine that. And it probably didn't reflect a, a little child running around the house in her diapers. But over time, over time... She was called Grace, and she became Grace, gracious, graceful. Where do, rarely do we pick out names for ourselves. Well, some people do, but rarely do we. It's more like our names pick us. Our parents give us our names. Other people bestow names upon us, and sometimes these names, these nicknames, are not at all the names we would have chosen for ourselves. I belong to a unique fraternity at Miami. We were a deep and close family at the radio station. And of course, everybody had to have a nickname. There was Goofus, and there was Jock, and there was Zeus, and there was the Beast, and there was Slim, and there was Crowd, and there was the Kid. Sometimes these names were given in loving jest, designating that we cared for that person. The one who kept asking questions at all the production meetings and had to meditate on the deep reality of the party he attended the night before, we called him Plato. Yet there were other 
not so generous names. Pee Wee, Fatso, Hunchback, Rip, Squeaky. Sometimes these names represent cruelty toward others rather than our love. I got a re really great opportunity last week among all the things happening at Churchwide to reconnect with a friend I've missed for at least 17 years. And he's middle-aged and we went to Primanti Brothers and I suggested he indulge himself in a bowl of ice cream and he wouldn't do it. I pressed him, I urged him to join me in eating the forbidden calories. I figured if he ate one and I ate one, then it was good. And I said to him, why on earth are you worried about this? I couldn't believe he was so resistant. I mean, he's skinny as could be. We could call him slim. I said, you've never been fat. And he said, but I was. Really, I said, that must have been a long time ago. And he said, it was. As a kid growing up, they called me Chubby. That name stuck with me all through college. I hated it. I smiled when they said it to me, but I was dying inside. And I swore to God one day, I would never be fat again. Wow. Can you feel the pain? Do you know that pain? The pain of a name that hurts, traps, confines, cuts to the heart. It makes very much difference how we are named. Today's gospel is a story about a woman. Now in the Bible that I use, she is identified as the bent woman. If you looked at the title of this section of scripture, it says the bent woman. How would you like to be immortalized as a bent woman? She was bent over, had been bent over, staring at the ground, contorted for many, many years. Now she doesn't appear to have a name. Perhaps when they saw her creeping down the street, body bent, eyes attempting to lift it up from the ground. Perhaps they didn't say, here comes Mary, or look, there's Elizabeth, but maybe they said, here comes that bent woman. That was who she was, that was her life, her destiny, her whole sad fate. I know that a few of us get a little less than patient in efforts to speak of persons with some not so traditional designations it's called political correctness such as crippled, blind, or deaf. We get a little impatient when we have to refer to them as persons with disabilities or persons with special needs and, and so on. But I wonder if it would help us to think that maybe this is an attempt by those who are different from the majority to name themselves, to gain some freedom from having the majority identify them that way, to label them, pigeonhole them, and perhaps discriminate against them. The woman doesn't appear to have a name other than the one given to her by the town, a name based upon disability. She doesn't have an identity other than that of victim. She is the one who is bent, stooped, bearing upon her shoulders an invisible yet very heavy burden. The burden of being different. The burden of not looking like everyone else. The burden of not being able to do what everyone else does. I think in some ways God put her here in the scriptures for everyone who is named. She is just a drunk, retarded, slow, stupid, blind, gimp, until she is encountered by Jesus. Jesus heals her, and that is absolutely wonderful. For the first time in her adult life, she is able to stand up straight, to look straight ahead, to be restored to what we might call normalcy. Ah, but there is another miracle here, perhaps just as wonderful, and that is the way Jesus speaks to her, what Jesus says about her. He does not call her disabled or hindered or a victim of life's circumstances or unfairness, though from most points of view, she would be. Rather, he calls her daughter of Abraham. Oh, that's significant. The one whom our Bibles call the bent woman 
is called the daughter of Abraham. Couldn't name this section of scripture that, could we? What does that mean, who was Abraham? Well, you know that he was the great, great granddaddy of Israel. Abraham was the one to whom one starry night a promise was given. God promised to make a great nation out of Abraham, a nation through which all the other nations of the earth would be blessed. She is a daughter of Abraham. She is heir to the blessings of God. Moreover, as a daughter of Abraham, she is called to be a blessing to the whole world. She is meant for more than some superficial, cruel, or limited labeling she, bent over though she was, is part of God's great salvation of the whole world. And she stands up straight. Even if her back had not been healed by Jesus, I suspect she would have stood up straight anyway. Her life had been caught up in God's promises to the world. Her life had been renamed, renamed. Not as a long story of injustice or victimization or sadness, but as part of the great drama of God's redemption. And Jesus names you too. He will not let you acquiesce to the names the world wants to lay upon you. You are daughters, you are sons of Abraham. Your life is meant to count for something, to take its place on stage in God's great drama of redemption right alongside this daughter of Abraham from thousands of years ago. When we baptize a baby, we always baptize it with the name that the parents gave that child. And even though they've named them those, that child maybe John or, or Joan or Jack or Jacqueline, we now lay on a child a much more determinative, revealing name, Christian. We foresee that this child's life will be a long story of growing into that name, living into God's gracious dreams for us. You are also a daughter and a son of Abraham. Your name, whatever else we may call you, is Christian. Stand up straight. Be a blessing to all you meet. Go in peace. One of the most famous preachers, if not the most famous preachers of our age, named Fred Craddock. And his ministry was defined one day in a restaurant. A man walked by his table when he was very young and said, are you a preacher? Someone embarrassed, Fred said yes. The man pulled up a chair to Fred's table. Preacher, I'm going to tell you a story. There was once a little boy who grew up sad. Life was tough because my mama had me, but she had never been married. Do you know what a small Tennessee town treats? Do you know how a small Tennessee town treats people like that? Do you know the words they use to name kids that don't have no father? Well, we never went to church. Nobody asked us. But for some reason or another, we went to church one night when they were having a revival. They had this big, tall preacher visiting to do the revival, and he was all dressed in black. He had a thunderous voice that shook the little church. We sat towards the back, Mama and me. Well, that, that preacher got to preaching about what I really don't know, but he was stalking up and down the aisle of that little church preaching, and it was something. After the service, Mama and me were slipping out the back door when I felt that preacher's hand on my shoulder. I was scared. He looked way down at me, looked me straight in the eye and said, boy, who's your daddy? I don't have no daddy. That's what I told him. I ain't got no daddy. Oh, yes, you do, boomed the preacher. You're a child of the kingdom. You have been bought with a price. You are a child of the king. I was never the same after that. Preacher, for God's sake, preach that. The man pulled his chair away from the table. He extended his hand and he introduced himself. Fred said the name rang a bell. This was the legendary former governor of the state of Tennessee, Ben Hooper. Stand up straight. Be a blessing to the whole world. 
Go in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of the day, O Christ the Healer, we have come, hymn number 610. Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's compassionate rule and enduring love, let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. Deliver your church from all that binds and limits. Free us to boldly proclaim the gospel and seek the truth. Today we pray especially for St. John Lutheran Church in Hicksville. Lord, in your mercy. Bestow on your creation ample rain and an abundant harvest. Cultivate in us a fresh respect and a deep humili humility for the environment. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold the oppressed. Liberate those in bondage. And strengthen those who labor under the yoke of repressive government. Free us to work for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. 
Rescue all in harm's way. Sustain the poor and hungry. Heal those who are ill or afflicted. This morning we pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, along with Michelle Cole, Dale, Dave Swart, Betty McLaren, Autumn Michaels, Bill Cones. We pray for the family and friends of Carl Spires, the family and friends of Pastor Ed Winkler and his wife Ruth, the family and friends of Doris Baker, and the family and friends of Dorothy Weiser. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military, and we offer our prayers for all others whose names we place before you this morning. Free us to be your hands of love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Save us from lives and schedules filled with too much activity. Free us to be a Sabbath people who take time for worship, rest, and renewal. Lord, in your mercy. Gather us at the last with all your saints and bring us in awe and joy to your unshakable kingdom, the heavenly Jerusalem. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us extend a sign of peace to one another. shall the king say unto them upon his right hand. Yeah. 
and hungered, and he gave me meat. I was a thirst, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, Rejoice Ye Pure of Heart, hymn number 873. Good news. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. 
We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life. And we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 for the contemporary worship and at 10.30 for the traditional worship service. Thursday evenings at 7.30 we have our praise service. And the fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30 we have our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio. No gift is too small and will help us with our mission of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.